It's me, Nicole. And it's me, Tessa. And I hope you stand by us. And Kim is here, but she doesn't get a character name this week because there's no girls in this there's movie. There's no girls in this fucking movie. Not a one. Well, well there's except for the waitress and the well, mom. Well, yeah, but I mean, there's like no girls in no this movie. No little girls in this movie. No. Nope. Like, there's boys. This is another one that we just got to one of pretend our... we were them and yep. go on along on the adventure. A fabulous, dangerous adventure for boys only. Yep. You guys no want to see a dead body? Mind. We would have wanted to. Nobody Maybe invited I wanted us. to go see a dead body. You don't know. God. Before we get into it, <laughs> talk about the doom biz. Do it. Uh, I, I said that and I have nothing <laughs> written down in front of me. Um, support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash doom generation. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram at doom generation pod. Follow us on Twitter at doom gem pod. Uh, our link tree and Instagram is all the things, all the links you need. All the things all the time. We even, when we remember to update it, have Spotify and Apple Music playlists that correspond to some of our favorite tunes from all of these different movies that we've covered. Or just tunes. No, maybe I think they're all from the movie. Well, yeah, well not, maybe like not just, our favorites, but just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just maybe not our favorite. Some of the iconic music you, re- you remember from these movies. The ones that Because now we have some movies under our belt with... With actual like with actual soundtracks. Yes. We try not to do too many scores unless the scores were really, you know, if they're bangers, well, they might be on there. <laughs> if they're know. bangers. If it's a banger. If it's there. a banger. Um, all right. That's all we're going to do. The yeah. cast. Stand by me. Uh, River Phoenix. Aww. Oh, R.I.P. forever. Forever. I love well, you. Yeah, that's love usually you. how that no. works. <laughs> what if he comes back? Oh, that would be weird. But yeah, it says Lil Chris Chambers. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton as Gordy Lachance. Corey Feldman. As Teddy Duchamp. Jerry O'Connell. Verno. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland. As Ace Merrill. Gary Riley. As Charlie Hogan. That was Dave from Summer School. We just yep. talked about him. I barely recognize him because he didn't have that. Beret on, right? He didn't have the long hair in the beret. No, he had weird hair, but he had it wasn't... weird hair, but in a different way. No, but in a very different way. Bradley Gregg as Eyeball, Eyeball, and he is Chris's older brother. Yes, so River Phoenix's older brother. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and we forgot to say Billy. Oh, Casey Billy. T- yeah, Casey says C- Samasco C- as Billy Tessio, who is Vern's brother, and then John Cusack. As Denny Lachance. The dead older brother. Oh, and I 40. also have uh, Andy Lindbergh as Lardass Hogan mm. and Kent W. Luttrell as Ray Brower. Or, yeah. Oh, he played, who played the body. <laughs> yeah, he was the body. And old Richard Dreyfus. Oh, Richard Dreyfus. Who we drug last summer. We gonna Every do it again. Every 4th of July, we like to bring you Every a Richard summertime, Dreyfus movie. We like to drag Rif- Richard Dreyfus. Oh, we might talk <laughs> a little bit of shit about Richard Dreyfus. I don't know. He could take it right. He's not too sensitive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Boomer. Oh. Oh. So this is based on a short story called The Body by Stephen King. Yes. Directed by Rob Reiner. Mm-hmm. We just did a Carl Reiner. Ooh, summer school Carl Reiner. Oh, Gary Same Riley. actor. Yes. Yeah. They're, sh- they're right. sharing casts. Just interweaving things. Mixing it up. And so, and you said that the, you read the short story or at least. I, I it read it a long time ago. I have the book. I and it's right pretty here. close it's from, other than some extra detail. What's it called? Different Seasons. And it also has uh, the Shawshank Redemption and Apt Pupil. Okay. Are the ones that are also in there. And this, I think, is another one that's not available anywhere to watch right now. No, I don't think so. I have it. Yeah. You gotta own it. I gotta own it. I think I bought it for like five bucks in one of those barrels. Yeah, that's it like a five dollar one. It's no. old. Come on, it's it was a classic. I was like, oh, I love this movie. 
I love it. I love Little Will Wheaton. And I can't remember how long it's been. It's not since I was a kid since I watched it, mm. but it's been quite some time. I yeah, think, since it I had watched been a Stand little while. Me. I think recently my husband was watching something where they had gone to the locations mm-hmm. of, and I was like, ooh, I should be paying attention to this, but I was working. So you I didn't? Like, I couldn't really. I had like one ear on it. Like they went <laughs> to the train tracks. And is it really in Oregon? It's not really that long. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think it's really in. Ooh, that was not solid table. That was floppy notebook. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning on your floppy notebook. That is not a euphemism. Mm. Speaking of floppy notebooks, Here's Richard, Richard Dreyfus. Dreyfus. <laughs> <laughs> the writer. He's AKA, having a moment. Yes, this is our main character. We'll soon find mm, out. Yeah, he's the narrator slash Gordy, Gordy. slash writer yeah, of the whole his thing. His character name, which I don't is understand the how they thought this Richard is Will Dreyfus. Wheaton grown up. No, no, Will Wheaton looks exactly the same. I don't know that you could. What? Yeah. It was going to be another oh, actor. Who do you know? Oh, oh. do you know who the original Dreyfus actor was? Dreyfus has a better voice I for guess. the voice I mean, he acting. does, but he like... Does, yeah, he's, he can... He I guess. Some narrating, I, mean, I guess. Like, he can narrate some shit. I don't know. He could, like, find some sharks. And he's, like, sitting in his truck reading an article in the newspaper about a fatal stabbing. An attorney, Chris Chambers, was fatally stabbed. And he's... Something about an a escaped little... convict, I think it says. Right, or something in like the that. story of the convicts from Shawshank. I don't know Ooh. if it says that. In the... I don't know if it says it in the article. Mm-mm. No. And he sees some boys go by on their bikes off on a little adventure. And he thinks back and he says, I was 12 going on 13 when I first saw a dead human being being." in the summer of 1959. Right. And it's 60 in the story, which is weird that it's only a year off. And there's also a whole other thing that goes before the. So in the story, it's 60. Yeah. Why would you move it? Is it just something about 1959 sounds older I guess. than I don't 60? Know. Like, oh, wow, I the guess. 50s, man. I don't know. But they're in Castle Rock, Oregon. And it was the whole world to him. Yes. And you're hearing Rockin' Robin and the radio show. So, yeah, we're in a flashback. And the yes. movie is all a flashback. The whole thing is his recollection. Well, he's writing it. Right. He's he's doing the story he's of. He's finally that hard that up for good material. Summer. <laughs> Yes, the right, because he says that. Yeah. And so, like, you meet summer, the crew. Mm-hmm, you meet the you gang. See, they meet up at the treehouse. There's secret knocks. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris is up there telling French jokes. About smoking what does he say? and like, Yeah, cards. they're smoking and playing cards. And Teddy was crazy, and his dad was crazy. And, like, he put his ear on a stove. And his ears all melted. And burned it until it almost burned off. And, like, Chris was the leader, and he was from a bad family, and he was his best friend. Mm -hmm. And old Verno, who can't remember the secret knock. And they let him in anyway. Of course. Come on, guys, it's me. He's got unbelievable news. Yes, and, you know, he ran all the way over here. (laughs) I ran all the way home. So, yes, they sing over him every time. Sincerely. He's trying so hard. And Jerry O'Connell has such issues with having been the fat kid. I'm... If you sure. listen to an interview now and anybody ever even hints at anything about him having been the fat kid, he's so, like, well, got an issue about it. I would imagine that. Well, because, like, look what both he and Chunk, mm-hmm. like. And Jerry O'Connell, fine. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like not, they both, not he's fine. He's fine. Well, he's fine. That's what I'm saying. Fine. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what, and okay. he was cute. Yeah, he was cute. Whatever, but I mean, I could imagine that there's like a when you are constantly cast as the fat kid. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I listened to an interview with him where he was talking about oh that when they were casting for something, and now I'm totally blanking. Something where you ride a BMX. It wasn't. Oh, oh and it was he rode a bike, and whatever the thing was, he was like, "Oh, I'm a shoe in for this because like I'm a bike rider, right, and like I'm he like could do it." And he didn't get it because like some skinnier kid got it who didn't even like wasn't like, a good wasn't bike even, rider. See, that's fucked yeah. up. So he's that's got what I'm some, saying. Like when you're constantly mm-hmm. pigeonholed in that kind of role, because it was always a formula. There was always this group of kids. There was yeah. like the bad kid, and the nutballs kid, and the fat kid, and like the normie kid that's like observing all of the other kids. And the no girl. 
and, and no, no girls. girls. And what did Kim say that um, this Teddy that Corey Feldman said this was the closest representation to autobiographical or something like that? That's something. To his real life or real personality? That's something. I'm sad for you. Every time I hear about Corey Feldman. And you're sadder for him. I mean, I just, I, like I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I would throw myself in front of Corey Feldman. But I'm gonna be sad while I do it, right? You're like, oh, this isn't worth it. But it's shy. Oh, because I love you. I'll be the only one up there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Vern finally gets out his unbelievable news, which is that. Oh yeah, you guys want to go see a dead body? And so they tell and the story like, about what? his jar of pennies. Yes, that he was under the porch, and they're like, oh, we all knew what he meant. He buried at the beginning of the school year. He buried a jar of pennies, and, and he drew a map. And his mom threw it away. And now he's been digging holes under his house, which that house is just going to sink into the fucking ground. I know. There's so many holes under there. He has compromised the foundation at this point. (laughs) I mean, where could it possibly be? I know. He doesn't have a lot of spots left. You think there would have been a His brother probably dug it up like months ago. Oh, totally. Like right after he buried it. it, He he dug it up and Mm -hmm. took his pennies. It's been gone. (laughs) He's never going to see them pennies again. So he's under there and overhears Billy and Charlie talking about this missing kid, Ray Brower, or Flowers, or whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had gone missing, what, three days Mm -hmm. before? Like he went out berry picking and nobody seen him again. He was a kid their age. Yeah, that's so smaller. He's a younger. Age. Yeah, he's twelve or thirteen. Also, and they want to tell somebody, but they don't want to tell somebody because the reason they saw him is they were out there in a stolen car. So we can't really tell anybody because why else would we be out there? Everybody like, how do we get out there? We don't have cars. If we were with Ace, we mm-hmm. could have said we were in his car, but we weren't. Right. So we can't say shit. So now Teddy knows. So he goes right. and tells them, and "Is like, hey, can you guys camp out tonight?" Right. Or Vern knows. Or yeah, he's yeah, like, Vern. We should you know, we'd be heroes if we find him. Yes. We'll get, get our, our picture in, in the paper. paper. He's like, well, I don't know, guys, because... I know, it's his Billy's idea, and then know. he immediately wusses out. And he's like, he's not going to care, mm-hmm. because it'll be us They're that not found him, anybody, and not yeah. him with the boosted car, so what do they give a shit? Yep. So they all decide that we'll camp out, and can you imagine... For two days they're gone? Well, like that in itself, but like Gordy suggests... That Vern, because they're all saying that they're camping out at Vern's. Right. Well, I think they end up all saying they're going somewhere. Well, like afterwards. Yeah. But the night, that first night, they're going to be supposedly camping out in Verno's backfield. But Gordy suggests that Vern tell his parents that he's staying over at Teddy's. If I knew (sighs) that the father in the house. You are not staying over there. Not at Teddy's house. He can come here. You are not going over there. Right. That's fine. Teddy can come over, but you're not staying over there. Not with Crazy Dad Mm-mm. and the Melty Ears. <laughs> melty. Like he would have been dad better off the Melty Ears. Saying, That's like, my yeah. band name. <laughs> Tell him like you're staying over at Gordy's. Like yeah. Gordy, like somebody more reasonable. I mean, like yeah, Danny just died like four months ago, but like so yeah. So then we find out about that that Gordy's mm. older brother Denny died four months ago in a jeep accident. Right. And that he's now the invisible kid. Because he was already the fucking invisible right. kid. Right. He's he not really now was, the invisible because kid. Because there was like the flashback of them at dinner. And he's ignoring him the whole time. Right. And like Denny's trying to tell him like, Dad, did you read yeah, his story? His story is really good. And he's like, Pff. And he's like a great big brother in these flashbacks. I know. He's like the nicest and older John brother Cusack ever. Cusack is so it's cute. adorable. So adorable. We haven't done any John Cusack, have we? I don't think We've so. We've gone two years of the 80s Two and 90s years. without talking about John Well, here we go. John here it Cusack. is. And th- for, for this to be it, though? Like, I know. This isn't one I think of as a John Cusack no. vehicle. Vehicle. <laughs> so, yeah, he goes in the room to get his canteen, and the dad's like, because right, the mom doesn't even answer him. He's like, no. Mom, where's my canteen? Mom, 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 mom. Is it because it's she knows it's in Denny's I'm room, guessing. or is it just because And that's why she's... his dad's like, it's in Denny's room. Maybe a little bit of both. Right. And I feel like it was like this in It, too. That there was a mom that was out of it. Well, when, oh, when Georgie, uh, Georgie died, died and whatever, and like he was in the room and it was all awkward and like, yeah, whatever. Well, anyway, so he goes in there and that's when he has the flashback, the flashback about of Denny. getting the Yankee cap. Yes. Oh. He like gives him his oh, I right away. I'm like, oh, God damn it. Why is this movie I making know. me tear up? Right I know. This is serious. Mm-hmm. Maybe this shouldn't be a party. We're going to see a dead kid. Right? It's going to get emotional, you guys. <laughs> it might. I don't know. We'll see. 
We'll so see yeah, him. he gets his, I'm gets a tall his shit and get. He gets his shit and get. He gets all his stuff together. Like he doesn't even have to tell him that he's camping you don't out see at fucking yeah. Vernos. You don't see any of the kids have to tell their parents anything because no, well, I, especially care. Gordy because like his parents don't. They wish it was him. Oh, that's so awful. It is. It's so awful. And to lose a kid and then your solution is just ignore the next one. Like and you I have mean, a second like, chance and you're just gonna fucking ignore I know. this kid. Well, because <laughs> what? what? The wrong uh, yeah. kid died. Well, yeah. and like, I wonder if, like, did his dad really say that? I don't think or so. Or did I think he that just, was just his nightmare? But kind of like because implied it of the way that he was treated before and after that he kind of thought that. That would be my thought. Yeah. Well, we we haven't gotten there yet. Well, like we'll discuss that later. We'll discuss that later. So Gordy and Chris meet up, and Chris brought a gun that he oh, stole yeah. from his old man's bureau. Right. He's not gonna know, and he's like, "Is it?" loaded he's like no and he shoots it and it's fucking loaded oh shit jesus shoots the trash can takes off running and the waitress comes out like, like who's lighting off firecrackers cherry bombs out here and they run into ace and the boys Uh oh. and he swipes gordy and i wanted to see him get this i fucking wanted hat to back. see him get that hat back i cannot believe he they got his lick as back a he got his lick back but so still whatever, he should have but... taken that fucking cap out of his ass so yeah, he, he snatches it right off his head. He's like, my brother gave that to me. And he's like, and now you're giving it to me. Right? And they know. They know what happened to his brother. They're like, from his class. Uh, yeah. He was the same age as they yeah. as they are. But he was the football hero. So well, I'm sure they fucking hated Denny. Of course. Even though he was a nice guy. And so Chris is like, you're a real asshole. Right. He tries to stand up for him. Well, like, Gordy's doing a pretty good job of... Right. Standing up for himself yeah, or yeah. as much as he well, can. But, he, like but this is Chris's brother that's with Ace. So I think he thought maybe for a second maybe he had some pull he here. Could. Like, come on. And fucking Kiefer Sutherland, man. You, you guys. Another Ooh. one of these. Why is it the worst guy that is the hottest guy? Yikes. <laughs> Like, he's going to try to murder a kid. Pushing this kid's face in the Ooh, ground, trying to burn, burn him, him with, with a, a lit cigarette. cigarette. And he would, too. He totally would have. Like, right in front of the kid's brother. Yeah. Like, eyeball. And eyeball eyeball's give a eyeball was like that. He probably, Ace probably did that shit to him. He probably <laughs> gave him that nickname. That's how they became friends. <laughs> eyeballed him and then nicknamed him Eyeball? <laughs> yep. That's fucked up. He was about to give him an eyeball junior. <laughs> <laughs> My balls. My eyeballs. My eyeballs. So they meet up with all the other two boys. So that's they don't get the right, hat. Like they they nope, take off. He whatever. Takes off. Eyeball has it. Eyeball. And yeah, he didn't even Maybe keep Chris it. Chris could like snatch that's it. That's what back I'm thinking. Later, is Chris like, could get you know, it. No, whatever. We just don't even know. But like I say, he gets his lick back, so it's fine. Yeah. So they all arrive and they start following the train tracks. Yes, they twenty all... to thirty miles is the and plan. I wonder, is that for real or is that like twelve year olds exaggerating? I don't know. That's a whiz. that's a walk. That's a walk. That is a Please. And Vern's like, let's hitchhike. Teddy's yeah, like, and they're pussy. like, no, that's pussy. He's like, I brought a comb. <laughs> Did your mom ever have any kids that lived? Yeah. What? No, <laughs> He's like, what? think about it. Come on now. Seriously. And like, they. None of them brought off. any food. Nope. They realized very quickly. They're all, Verno's hungry. Right off the bat, of course. And nobody brought anything. They brought water. But they've got $2.37 together. And is that? And in 1959. $2.37 from oh, The Shining. That? Is was that it 237? I feel like it was. Because there's that room 1408, and then is it room 137? 237. Or 237? Mm, yeah, oh. 237. Oh, yeah. okay. Stanley Kubrick's a shining All interpretation. Right. So they yeah. have sure $2.37. Verna only had seven cents. Yes. He had the less. And then here comes a train, and now Teddy is fucking playing Normandy. He wants to play train dodge. Which? How is this like Normandy? There was trains in the there, fucking... I don't remember there being... There were, there were girls in the movie. They were the stunt doubles. The girls what? were stunt doubles for the little yes. boys? Yes. Well, yeah, because they yeah. would have to have smaller people, so that stands to reason. Nice. Well, there you go. So the girls were just the badasses in the, the uncredited in the badasses in the All 80s. All the little adventures that the boys got to go on. Adult girls. women were fucking doing the stunts for this. Sisters are doing it for this. Only not for themselves. Doing no, it for doing the it little for, boys. Doing it for Rob Reiner. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, he's he's doing this. Chris whole has to physically thing. wrestle he, him off the fucking tracks. And I mean, it doesn't seem like it's that close, but still, like nobody wants to see 
that. And I don't think he was trying to die. I no. think he really did plan to dodge the train, but they also just don't trust that he's a reasonable enough kid no, to jump that he's in time. Not make a good enough decision. Like we just started, dude. Like we just Right? We've been walking for 15 minutes and you're about you to kill Ray yourself Brower on the yourself yes. before Jesus. we even get started. We're like you going guys want to see find... a dead body? Boop. We're going to find a dead body of a kid who got hit by the train, and the Why very first you thing you want to do, come on, is get hit by. Well, then we don't need to walk because now we can see this dead body by the train. Right? Track. Yeah. No, Thanks we're for done. Saving we us the time, home. Teddy. Thanks, Teddy. Movie's over. Right. Movie's over. Roll credits. <laughs> so, the end. So yeah, him and Chris get into a tussle. And right. They got to side skin it, and skin it, skin it. Skin it. Skin yeah. It. And um, Ace and the boys are They're out playing mailbox baseball, batting out mailbox. And Billy and Charlie are almost, they want to tell. But they're not telling. Nope, don't say anything. It's more Charlie wants to tell and Billy's like, Yeah, because he can't fucking, he's got like ants in his pants to fucking talk about it. (laughs) Yes, he does. He He, really does. He wants to give the tea so hard. He wants to bitch the pot so bad. (laughs) You guys, guess what we saw? Piping hot. So the little boy crew, the little gang, gets to the salvage yard. To the junkyard where Chopper. Yeah, so there's the legend of the the junkyard dog chopper. Yes, whose real name was Popeye. Oh, cute. <laughs> and he's been trained to sick specific parts of the mm. human anatomy. Chopper, sick, sick balls. balls. You don't want to hear that shit because then that's your ass. And so they get there and Milo and the dog are nowhere in sight. Nope, it's still too early. It's not open yet. So they hop the fence mm-hmm. and they sit in the shade and talk about Annette's tits. And Annette they, from the Mickey Mouse Club. Yes, of course. They talk about the bend in the sweater and, you know, whatever. And uh, they flip for who has to go into town. <coughs> to get food. To get food. And, oh, it's a goocher. A oh, gooch I have never heard anywhere nope. else but here. Neither have I ever. But, yeah, they all land on tails. And, like, yeah, that they all spooked. Spooked. Yeah, that this is oh, bad it's luck. it's a goocher. It's bad luck. And, you know, whatever. It's like, shut up. Teddy's like, that's baby stuff. Nobody yeah, knows like, that. Whatever. So they flip again. Gordy's got to go. And he tells him to shut up. And he's like, I don't shut up. I, I grow, grow up. And, and when, when I, I look at you, I throw, throw up. up. And then your mother goes around the corner and licks it up. Ooh. We said that so much. Yep. All the time. Oh, like as much as what was it? Um, milk, milk, lemonade around the corner. If I just <laughs> yep. Up your butt around the corner. <laughs> I'm rubber your glue. Anything you say, bounce off me and sticks uh, to you. Milk, yes, milk, this is a classic. Around the corner, but that's like one of my <laughs> so funny. You gotta do the thing. Milk, milk. Yeah, you gotta do the little <laughs> motions to show where the milk, milk, lemonade, and fudge come from. Doing it on your flat chest. <laughs> if you're like ten, yeah. Um, so yeah, finding new ways to degrade each other's mothers yes. is always held in high regard, which it was. Mm-hmm. Mom jokes was a big deal. It really was. It and, really and was. And you just got, like, like the just, worse it was, the more props you got yep. for going hard on someone's and mom. <laughs> there were several people that I would do that with until, like, one of them, like, their mom got sick. And they oh, were, like, and you're like, oh, and it was like, oh, well, okay, now that not. just kind of sucked all the fun out of that. Like, never mind. Your mom ruined it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, your your mom mom's so bad. It. She ruined the, your mom Yeah, game. You, she ruined Fuck. it forever. So Gordy goes to the store and this guy recognizes him as Denny's brother because right. Denny was like this. He was like a football the ultimate hero. quarterback hero. Yep. And he was going to be somebody mm-hmm. and like and then he the shop owners like he lost his brother in Korea. In he Korea. Says. So he kind of, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like he praises Denny a lot, but he also is kind of nice. He's to trying him. to be nice to Gordy. Right. But Gordy's having a flashback of them all at the dinner table where dad yes. is ignoring him right. to talk about football. Yeah. And Denny is trying to <laughs> like, oh, did you read Gordy's story? And it's like his story. mom's talking about his girlfriend and like, hey, see, there you go. You bring up girls and he gets all distracted talking about his brother's <laughs> bullshit fucking story. <laughs> And who is this guy? This guy is... <laughs> that guy is somebody. He's from... He's I feel like, like he was in other things. Stephen King like, things. Yes. Even. I feel I'm like blanking, that's... but yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he's from some other Stephen King but things. But he's... I feel like I see him like possessed or something. Or something. Like, yeah. Something's happening. I don't know. He's murdering somebody. And yeah. so he comes back to the present to the shopkeeper telling him like... Or asking him, oh, do you play football? Yeah. He's like, no. What do you do? Nothing. I don't know yet. Yeah, like, like I'm I don't 12. know. I don't, you know, whatever. And, and he like he, he bought raw meat for a pot. I think it was like <coughs> lunch meat. 
Was it? I think he bought and like burger lunch buns meat. because later, what were they cooking over the fire? Oh, maybe it was. I think they bought hamburger meat. Oh, maybe, maybe. And he bought yeah because it was a buns. pack of hamburger buns, which means later when they eat this, they've been walking around with this in yeah. the hot backpack. Yep, for four in the four paper. hours in the paper, in the paper days, in the, the paper, paper days. days. Before they cook it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, if it's over a fire, it was like a meat ball. Yeah. Mm. He's, been, he's been in 142 movies. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that dad's like so many things. Movies. movies. Yes. Coach Man in Hunter. Nightmare on Elm yes. Street. Manhunter. In Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. That shower scene. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. The locker room scene or whatever. Okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway. That's what we're talking about. Guado and oh, Total shit. Recall. That's oh, who he is. That's what it is. Fuck. That's what it that's is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So he gets Gordy gets back to the junkyard and the boys are not where he left them. Right. They're gone and he sees they're hopping the fence because Milo's there with Chopper and he turns around. And he's like, "Oh shit!" And he runs, run, Gordy, run, and oh, Chopper, sick, sick him. boy. And what he said was, "Sick him, boy." But what I heard was chopper sick, sick balls. balls. And then he gets to the fence in time. He gets over and realizes his dog is like a golden retriever right. or something. Yeah, a little Popeye's Just like a normal like, sweet little dog. Meow, meow, meow. Laying in the thing and they start bullshitting with chopper. They're like fucking Just teasing with this, this dog. dog. He's like, hey, stop teasing that dog. And then he starts talking about Oh, Teddy's I know dad. you. You're that peckerwood loony son. Uh-huh. Like that loony up at. Whatever the fuck he's at. I know what he like, did to your ear. Yep. And, and he's like, my dad s- stormed, stormed the Normandy. Beach at yeah. Normandy. Like, nobody rakes my old man. I'm going to kill you if you say it, say it again. And he does, of yeah. course. Loony, loony, loony. I'm going to rip your head off and shit down your neck. Yeah, they have to pull him off of the fence. And I know you. He knows all I of I know these all kids. you guys. I'm going to call your dad. Except for yours, loony. Uh, but yeah, I can't call him. I guess he's not there. So maybe it's safe if Fern stayed over. I guess. Who's over there, though? His mom? I guess so. Okay. Well, So they drag Teddy off. He's crying and mm-hmm. upset. But Chris, as like he's like the big brother of the group. Right. He's he supporting like consoles him. him. And he's like, nothing can change whatever is between you and your old man. And Gordy's like, I could never figure out with what his dad did to him. How right. Much Why he, he loved still his cares dad so much. My dad, who'd never laid a hand on me. I couldn't give a shit about mm-hmm. my dad. And the only time he laid a hand on me is because I was eating bleach. Oh God, that's a good reason. Yeah, I mean that's a good. You reason. need a smack. You trying to drink smack it out of your hand. Bleach, at least. Yes. So there's an awkward silence. Yeah, and he's like, "That pile of shit wasn't at Normandy." Like they're trying to build right. him up or whatever, and like Verno starts singing again, and they're not. It's like not the time. Yeah, or... like no, come on. And Teddy apologizes for ruining everybody's good time, and that's when Gordy's like, "Maybe it shouldn't be a good time." Right. He's like, well, "What are you talking about? You want to go back?" He's like, "No." He's like, "No, we're going to see a dead kid. Like right. maybe like, we should maybe it take should it be serious. a party. Like maybe it should be a thing." And then Verno's like, "Yeah." Oh God, is it going to be gross? Maybe I just realized it might like, be gross. Yeah, because uh, it's it been days. Might be. It's been, and he got yeah, hit by a, a train. Couple- so it's, who knows? It could be bad. I, yeah, like maybe I'll have nightmares. I don't know if I want to see this. Yeah, this it totally seems like the type of ill-advised thing I would have done and then gotten halfway there and it went, went oh. <laughs> um, I would I would have gotten all the way there and seen them socks and went, nope. No, mm. um, that's all I need to see. Nope. I ain't going all the way. Yeah. I ain't going all the way. So then Eyeball is carving the word cobras. I guess that's yep. their gang. They're cobras do- into Billy's arm. They're doing... They're tattoos, exchanging like tattoos with razor tattoos. blades, and there's more kids in the gang in this yeah, scene that you, you never. Really, they're not. They main. go with them, but they never name them there's or speak like to them. The four main yeah. dudes and like three other guys or some shit. But <clears throat> uh, Billy is complaining about only getting to feel Connie's tits, <laughs> and Ace tells him, "Well, that's because she's Catholic. You gotta date a Protestant. <laughs> she was good." And then they hear this news break about the still searching right. for Ray Brower. And so Charlie is again on the verge of telling them. He's so squinchy to be like, mm, they're never going to find him there. And Billy's like, no, come on. He's like, shut just... the fuck up. Like, yeah, like, I don't know. They're whatever. He's gone. Like, no one knows where he is. Right. Um, and then this scene I, has been in my head forever. The lollipop. Lollipop, lollipop, oh, lolly, 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 lollipop, lollipop, oh, lolly, 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 lollipop. 
<laughs> yeah, we used to do that with the pop and all. Oh, yes. I did it when I watched the movie. You did? I, I had sang to. along with it. I had to. They're doing the little dancing. Corey Feldman still dances like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Vern and Teddy are singing, but Chris and Gordy are trailing behind having a little more of a serious right, conversation. Right, they're a little, yeah, they're having a thing. Chris tells him he brought one Winston apiece for after supper. The best time That's for the a cigarette. best time for a Like, cigarette. you guys are 12! I know. Well, Shut but, up. I mean. I guess in 1959. Yeah, I mean, or in 1980. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway, and Gordy's like, do you think I'm weird? Yeah, yeah so what? But everybody's weird. He's like, no, like, really, though, do you think I'm weird? But, like, hey, Chris is wise beyond his years. Yeah, he his is. advice is always solid. Right. He's like, no, you're going to grow up and take those advanced college classes. classes and you're going to be a real writer. And he's and like, come on, we drag you down. You right, need to make like, some we're gonna smarter be, friends. We're going to be in the shop classes with the rest of the R words and. You know, you're going to do something. You're going to meet smarter guys and mm-hmm. you're going to move on from us. And Gordy's like, no. And he like explodes about how it's all stupid. Right. Like, I don't want to. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, don't do any of that. And he's like, that's just because of shit your dad says. Right. Like, that's your dad, man. And Chris is like, I wish I was your dad. <laughs> right. Like, you're not my dad. And he's like, I wish I, I was wish your was. dad. God gave you something, man. Right. All those stories you can make up. I know. If your parents he's are so too fucked up to do it, maybe I earnest. should. Yeah. He's, he's so a very earnest. serious kid. Well, like he didn't he grow up in that cult? Oh, in that real weird? life, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why they had them weird names. That's why Joaquin was Leaf and he was River. Yeah, and yeah. The girls were Summer, Summer and Rainbow. And, I yeah, think. something like that. But no, but that cult is like, yeah. I don't know was, if it's still around, but yes. Oh, I hope they not. did. There was a, a lot of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Vernon and Teddy are like, "Come on, the kid's not even going to be dead anymore." By right? The time yeah. We get by the time there. we get there, he won't even be dead anymore. Before we find out if they ever get to this body, yes. we're going to take a quick break. Oh, I think we need to before what's coming. We'll be right back. Ah, Nicole. Tessa. Guess what? What? The anchor ad is gone. I forgot to tell you something. Well, you're always forgetting stuff. Anchor turned into Spotify for podcasters. Oh, what? Yes. So they changed it. Yeah, but all they changed was the name. Oh, thank goodness. You can still create, edit, and distribute your podcast from the phone or the computer. Wait a minute, though. Is this still free? It is still free. Uh, Yes. You can make money on Spotify for podcasters. No way. They're actually going to pay you for this. They'll give you an ad. You can get subscriptions to your podcast. (laughs) Other people will pay you, too. Can you believe that we get paid to do this? (laughs) That's silly and if you want to see how easy it is and make some money on the side go to spotify.com forward slash podcasters you should do it we're doing it you do it everyone should do it tell them doom generation sent you yes and we're back we're back and oh shit it's that train scene y'all oh we've come to the part of the tracks that goes over the river Mm, right and if they go around it's gonna take forever and Teddy's like, it's fine if a train comes, just jump 100 feet into the river. Yeah, he's like, we'll just jump off. It's like, it's like 100 feet. And it's, <laughs> yes. it's a ways. Like, that's probably not wise. They could hang down like the Lost Boys. And you don't, you'd think you'd hear a train from further away, but I don't know. I, I mean, don't know it, how like sound with it works. Being <laughs> open. Well, yeah, he tries. So Gordy he feels does, the yeah, track. Like he doesn't feel smart, anything. He doesn't feel any vibrations. But for real. I would have ran the whole fucking way. And like I get and that's my question. Like it looked a little rickety, but run not on really the metal like metal or something. Slats. Like your young kids. Not on the metal. That's on the side. Like down the middle. Well, because didn't one of the slats fall fits. when Vern was like crawling? No, he or no, that was the, the comb. comb. The comb. That's right. I brought it for you guys. Because you don't even have any hair. <laughs> and yeah, like why none of Vern, the things- who's the most scared, is crawling, but it's like Fern. I know you get need up to get and up and move. At least like walk. nobody even says shit. No, I literally would have run. Speed is the key. whole way. Yes. I wonder if he was still coming down. Do you ever hear that story about uh, somebody had weed brownies on the set of Stand by Me? Yeah, and he ate like too many, and he didn't oh, no. know. And they found him later at a park, like freaking out and crying. I did not hear this. This is Jerry O'Connell. Yeah, that he had eaten. Oh, weed brownies and got all fucked up and was in like a maybe park that he was all crawling on the tracks yeah. and they're like yeah that's good whatever yeah, that yeah. works well, for Vern this will work for that yeah like there was all kinds of shit they got up to all kinds of nonsense like mm. supposedly River Phoenix like 
lost his virginity. Oh. River Phoenix lost his virginity to who? The waitress? Some girl. Some yeah, girl. Some girl. He came in the next day, wrote a note to Rob Well, like, it oh, because didn't his parents, like, get him a tent in which to do that outside of the house? <laughs> like, he, like, it was a thing where, I'm saying, like, it was a, poor River Phoenix. Oh, poor boy. I mean, there's still, like, there, we still got Joaquin. We do. We got the ovens. They don't do There's anything. There's a bunch of them. No, I don't think entertainment. They do anything, I don't think Joaquin do. But so the train's coming. The train's coming. They're walking along. They're <coughs> sauntering along yes, the train tracks. Slowly. Like they got no place else to fucking be. Like then, yeah, it's high up, but it's wide. Like there's a big ass train that's coming. And Gordy hears something. He looks behind. Train. And Teddy and Chris run, but Vern is still crawling. He's like Vern. Gordy's trying to get him up, and he falls. And he's right, gripping the track and won't get up. Yes, he like has to oh. get him up off of there because he panics. And now they're running because Teddy and Chris have already made it to the other side, yes. and they're like, "Come on, right, fucking run!" Oh, it makes my fucking sphincter clench. <laughs> and they get almost to the end, and they and jump off the side. They gotta jump, and they go like, "Oh it's just shit!" Like down a little dirt ravine. They're okay. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. They made it. And Teddy's like, well, at least we know when the next train's coming through. Oh, dirt, dirt, dirt. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So th- when you turn into ZZ Top right yeah. now? <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> they, they need to go that, that way. way. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to somewhere when it's dark and make a campfire. Right. And they're talking about the all-time train dodge. Right? Yes. Like, I wasn't even that scared. Yeah, I was fine. He's like, oh, yeah, right. Let like, me check your jockeys for Hershey squirts. Yes. Which was so something we said uh, as kids. Hershey squirts. Hershey it went squirts. along with the diarrhea. Diarrhea. Oh. I'm surprised I didn't do that. Right? The diarrhea song? I feel like Come that would now. go. <laughs> and when your tummy kind of hurts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> when you're sliding into first and you're feeling something burst. Diarrhea. <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> Um, and so Chris wants them, or they have their smoke. They, so they yes, eat the old they have meat their, that's been in their bag <laughs> all day. Old meat. The Vern also drops in the fucking fire Which is probably in the good, because, I don't know, there's going to be worms. Char broil. And Chris wants Gordy to tell him his story. Yes, he's like, okay, I've been kind of... I've been kind of working, on, working on a little something different. He tells the story of Lardass Hogan. Oh, God. Everybody called this kid Lardass, even his little brother and sister. Everybody called him Lardass, and Kids he had a school. plan. But yeah, he got the idea for the greatest revenge. He was going to get revenge on everybody. So he joins the pie eating contest. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and the grown ass man who's the champion right, trips the him on his way champ. up the He's stage. Like, you better not even think about it. I bet you got a big appetite, Lardass. Oh, and even like the fucking host of the things calling Lardass, the crowd is chanting Lardass. Antelopes are boom, bada boom, mm. bada boom. But what the audience didn't know mm. is that he didn't want to win. Nope. He drank castor oil oh, and, and a ate a raw egg, egg which I, is that necessary even? I don't I, girl, the raw egg is that? I'm I don't know what so I know what disgusted. castor oil does, but the raw egg seems like extra. I'm more disgusted with the pie eating. Yes, I think, so the than eating of the pie is worse than the vomiting. I think this, like I'm telling you, there's that commercial right now with that woman eat like haphazardly eating blueberry pie, and it reminds me of this. And it. it just what's it a commercial for? Whitening toothpaste. Oh, I haven't seen it. So can you know, like you eat the blueberry pie, and if you eat it like that, your teeth get all fucked up. I don't know. <laughs> like, if you eat nothing but blueberry pie every <laughs> day, squishing you them need... between your front teeth like oh. a fucking maniac. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> Oh, oh, what? The blueberry pie what? filling was made with cottage cheese. Why That's wouldn't unnecessary. they just let him eat pie? I guess too much sugar. But it has well, I was going to say, is he a diabetic? Like, like the whole filler, so it wasn't all blueberry pie filling. It was that, like that'll That's make it throw up. Disgusting. A blueberry and cottage cheese they pie. They could have had a real barf fest. Right? Oh. And so, of course, after about five pies, his belly starts to make a well, strange he's like, and scary he's sound. He's killing them. Oh, yeah. He's, he's going. killing them. He's like, done. Done. Which these pies were not done. No, they were not done. Barely the middle of these I pies was, was trying eaten, not to but that's look fine. too hard because it grosses me the fuck out. And then when his stom- stomach starts to make the sound, he oh, stands it up. it rumbles and like, boom, it's a boom. And he boom. projectile vomits Blech. all over the champion, like, which starts a chain of blueberry oh, barfing. And why is the whole audience has only eaten blueberries? 
I know. The audience vomit is well, all blueberries. It's, it's Gordy's story. Anything can happen. Gordy story. Gordy story. <laughs> <laughs> So, if, yeah, for whatever reason, they had all been eating blueberries and there was right. a complete and total barfarama. Barfarama. And Lardass just sat back and enjoyed and the show. Enjoyed what he created. And then Verno's like, well, then what happened? And that's it. Like, no, that's like the end so of the story. So they love the story, but Teddy's like, nah, I don't like that ending. Right. Like, he should have shot his dad. Yeah, he should have shot and his dad and run Texas away and join the Texas like, Rangers. Teddy, get some help. Seriously. I mean, it's uh, 1959. There is no help. No. For Teddy. No, there is not. No. And uh, Vern wants to know, did Lardass have to pay to get into the... That's his only concern. And he was like, no, they just let him join. He's like, oh, okay. It's a great story then. He'll be able to sleep tonight. Yeah. (laughs) So they talk into the night. They wake up to the sounds of coyotes howling. They talk about if Mickey's a mouse... Donald's a duck. Oh, of course. The hell is What's goofy? goofy? And like, if I could only eat one thing, it's easy. Cherry, Cherry flavored Pez. Pez. No. Like, ew. And like, Goofy's a dog. And it's like, yeah, it's a $6,400,000 question fix. Like, that's a question. He's like, he can't be a dog. He wears a hat and drives a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mickey and Minnie are mice that do that right? shit, Right, they so. also do. And like, but Pluto is a dog. Yeah, but didn't they say isn't uh, Goofy like a cow or something? Claire is a cow. Clarabelle is a cow. Uh, yeah, he kind of looks like her, but she bit. looks like a cow. She's got a he's udder. a cow dog. <laughs> he cow dog dog cow dog cow, dog. cow. pussy cow pussy, pussy cow, cow pussy cow. cow. Uh, and so they so, go on watch with the gun because right, the because coyotes. they hear the coyotes. Like nobody talks about Ray Brower. They hear the coyotes. They think it's ghosts. Right. Teddy plays like he's going out there. Oh yeah, he's he's the first one to keep guard. He will not shut his fucking mouth. I so know. Shut sleep. the and, fuck up. And I'm sorry, you narrates. gave Teddy the gun first. That's what I'm saying. Of this well, whole group I, of kids, I feel better. Maybe Teddy with the gun than Verno's watch. This scary right? ass motherfucker. He's pointing he's at crickets, at crickets and, and frogs and owls. Like I wouldn't let his scary ass have a gun. But Chris is super chill with the gun. Oh, he's cool. Just he's always cool. I wrote that. I was like, he's always fucking cool. And he notices Gordy's having a bad dream. And he this is the dream. It. Oh, at his brother's <sighs> funeral. It's, it's so brother's fucking funeral. awful. And his dad puts his hand on his shoulder and says, should have been, been you, Gordon. Ah! And so he wakes up with a start. And Gordy mm-hmm. is talking. So they have a little heart to heart. He stays up and hangs out with Chris. And he talks about how he didn't cry. At his brother's at funeral. his brother's funeral. And he's like, go back to sleep. He's like, no, no, no. I'm going to stay up with you. And uh, he suggests that Chris takes college courses with mm-hmm. him because he's smart. Right. Like he could do it. And he's like, no. The way my family's seen in this Right. Town. There's no way they're going to let me do it. Like, nobody even asked me. And he tells a sad milk money story. Oh, my God. He's like, nobody even asked me if I took the money. He's like, well, did you? He's yeah, like, yeah, you I know it. I did. Everybody, Everybody knows, knows I, I did. took it. But maybe I tried to give it back. And maybe that teacher mm-hmm. fucking showed up with a new skirt the Ms. next Simons week. Simons had a new skirt. Yeah. Mm. I remember it. I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe she had her eye on it for a long time. Oh, he's so And sad. he starts weeping. And he's like, I'm like, shit, I'm nobody. I guess I'm just a pussy, huh? Right. And he's like, nah, man. Like, it's cool. <laughs> they're, they're there for each other. These boys. No cry. No <laughs> right? cry. I know. Like, these... 12 year old boys are, are very like, much emotionally in tune and there for one another. Oh, for sure. At least these two. Yes. Well, they're best friends. Yeah. Like the other two, because they end up seeing less of them, but mm-hmm. these two stick ish together. So in the morning, Gordy has a little moment with a deer before everyone else wakes up. He's reading on the tracks and he sees the deer and he never mentioned it until and, just now. Right at the writing of this story. So they head back down the tracks and they find a shortcut across a field. But yes. Verno has some doubts about taking this shortcut. Right. Well, now at this point, seeing the body has become an obsession. Like yes. he's like, we got to go. Like we have to press on. We have to see it. And Verno's like, uh, I don't know, you guys. Like we, whatever. We don't know what's they, in that forest. Right. And he, just, everybody else takes off. So <clears> he has no choice. He's got to go with everybody, too. And then Ace and the boys are at the pool hall, and Charlie finally tells he Ace just the secret. Can't fucking keep it to. Well, neither can Billy. Like, and Billy is also telling Eyeball places. his secret. Yeah. Exactly. And they tell him what's up. <clears throat> and Ace is fine about it. Like they could have told him three days ago. He's like, yeah, let's get the fishing gear yeah. and fucking haul ass up and there. That's and that's a decent story. Yeah. Like we went up here like, to fish. I don't know why they weren't going to go. Like maybe we shouldn't go. Like why the why fuck not? Why shouldn't you? Nobody now knows at this you were point, there. Days later. 
<clears throat> and Ace is like, get in the fucking car now. Which, okay. All right, I'll Ace. I'll get in the car. I get sure, the car. I got in the car. You Actually, when to... we were watching this movie, you did. I got in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the forest shortcut, and they come to this like swampy area. Oh, God. Chris... Oh, they're doing the two for flinching. Oh, yeah. And, and finally, punches... Verno gets Teddy, and Teddy hits him, and he's like, hey. He's like, yeah, two, two for, for flinching. flinching. To you. Duh. Not to me. And they come across the pond, which apparently they weren't going to put these kids in a real pond because, ew, gross, we don't know what's in it. So they built a pond, but then mm-hmm. they left it for a couple months. Mm. And by then, ew, gross, who knows what the fuck is in it. probably as gross as a fucking real pond. Right. So they... Chris, Chris checks, it with a stick, but like, like six right in inches in. Him, not even. Like, they, it's right where they're standing. They like, take obviously. five steps in, maybe. Three. Sink to their necks. One. A tahu. A, a three. three. They start wrestling in the water. Right. They're playing and like dragging Gordy like, back come in. Come on. Like, piling no, come them on, on the guys. shore. Like, let's get out of here. And like, ew, they had their mouths open and their eyes open and everything. Mm. They're going to get an infection. And they get out and Gordy tells Vern, there's something on your neck. He's like, oh, yeah, right. It's a leech. Oh, it's a leech. Oh, leech! They like strip down and they're like covered. Leeches. Oh, and then they all stop and Gordy stops. Oh, shit, Chris. Oh, fuck oh shit, Chris. man. Oh, shit, man. And he pulls one out of his he wiener pulls, area. Like, to this day. <laughs> is it his balls? Is so it his wiener? I don't know. I'm that I could have a leech on my balls. Even though my you penis, don't have a penis I don't or have balls? One. No, but that's what I'm worried about. Right? I was afraid of I leeches. Was, Oh, this is one of those quicksand situations where yes, you thought where it was going to be more be of a deal. problem. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to come across way more leeches. Than I've I never have. had a leech never on me, but I, I am seen one in real terrified oh, to find a leech no, on me. I don't. Mm. And so he pulls this his hand out. It's all me. bloody. Oh, and he faints. And he faints. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then I don't know how long of a break they took to dry out all their clothes, but in the next scene they're, they're dry. dry. Yeah, they're well, like they getting to, redressed. So well, they, they all to wake him up and like they all sat there moment. in their tidy whities in the forest, hanging their shirts on trees for well, they don't an want hour to get or two. Jungle rot in their feet. Uh, and they're like, Chris and Vern want to take Gordy back, and Teddy's like, "Come on, you're a right. pussy, right?" And he's like, "Verno wants to go back," and like, "Oh, maybe we should go." And, and like, Gordy's, Gordy's like, "Stop! No. I'm not going back. We're not going back. We're going. I'm seeing this fucking. I'm body. seeing this fucking body. We're seeing this body. He's ours." Yes. So he heads out with determination. The boys follow suit. Right. Ace is, meanwhile, mm-hmm. trying to race some other guy on the road. Ooh, he plays chicken, but he plays it to the bone. Oh, he sure do. Oh, God, he's that little toothpick back and forth. And holy fucking While shit. he's drinking and driving and toothpicking and <laughs> <laughs> whatever you call it. What that tongue do? I was watching. Back and Let forth, me know. back and forth, back and Let forth, me know, back Ace. and forth. It was strong. And, uh, he, of course, so a truck is coming. He does not chicken out. Well, like, the truck has his, to bail out. Those are his friends, his right? Friends, yeah. yeah, those are so the rest racing. of the guys in the car. And what is it? Charlie and Eyeball? Or no? Oh, with him. Or Billy. I don't know. Whatever. They're with him. And they're like, come on. Come on, Ace. He's like, ooh, I won. Ooh. Because the truck goes chicken. And then you hear, you let him beat you, you cock knocker. Yeah, and I was like, oh, apparently knocker, Butthead was right? in the back of the seat. Seriously, because I wrote that down too, cock knocker. So they're incoming. Yes, yeah, so they're yeah. on their way way faster than the boys who are well, on yeah, foot. Yeah, because it's what? Because it's only 20 miles. miles. So it's going to take them 20 minutes where it took these kids right? two days to walk here. Probably less because they drive like. Like a fucking bat out of hell. Ooh, and them Studebakers. Stude. I don't know if that's what they were. I don't know if that's what it was right. either. I know that's an old car, but I don't know if that's, that's what they were driving. That's an old car. I don't know if that's what he was driving, but he looked good while he was doing it. I'll tell you that much. So the young gang finds the spot where they think the dead kid should be and they split right, up to they look. find the back Harlow Road is the road that they're looking for. So they split up and start looking for and Ray. Vern finds him. Yep. There he is. They see his little, little socks. socks. Got knocked out of his kids. Oh, I would have. Yeah. Just like the train knocked the life out of him, he got knocked out of his kids. And they just uncover the branches from him and stare right? silently. The kid wasn't sick. He wasn't sleeping. The kid was dead. And Chris wants to build a stretcher. They're right. going to drag, gonna him, drag up him up out back. of there. Like, you would think that they would go make a phone call first and not have to do all the walking back and dragging the phone, a body. Though. They didn't pass nowhere with a phone except for maybe that store that was a ways back like well, a day ago. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that they didn't really think that they're twelve. Yes, they didn't. They didn't plan this well. But yeah, I guess also in the 
in the story, like there's a moment where like hail falls in his eyes, like in his mm. open because his eyes are open. It like, starts he starts hailing when they find him. The guy Kent W. Luttrell or uh. whatever, who d- I don't know what else he ever did, but he played that body real good. <laughs> Oh, the boys oh, really? Didn't see they the had body to, to get the then. reaction. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. They knew they were going to see a body, right? But that's they didn't the know what they were the going to see. That's kind of cool. I mean, at least it's a living dude. It's not right, like, they put like a real like, fucking dead fuck, body could there you or imagine? something. For 1986, they might have. I'm surprised. I'm surprised they didn't, they didn't just use a cadaver. You know what? They're like, you guys want to see a dead body? But they're like, like no, for real, for real, for real. We're going to film it. Yeah, they go to the body farm. They're like, walk around in these woods. And then Gordy has a little breakdown. Yeah, he has a moment. Like, why did you have to die? Why did Denny have to die? Right. Chris goes to talk to him and he sends Teddy and Vern to go find sticks and shit. He's like, oh, fuck off. And that's when Gordy's like, it should have been me. Yeah, he's like, don't say that shit, man. He's like, no, he just doesn't know you. Oh, and he's sobbing. He cries and he's like, Chris just puts his arm around him and lets him cry. You're going to be a great writer someday. Like, you even might write about us guys if you ever get that hard up for material. And Gordy dries his eyes. Guess it'd have to be pretty hard up. Ace and Eyeball show up. Oh, fuck. And I'm surprised that there was no like they didn't come if they it's a good thing they didn't come a little bit earlier Oh, when he was crying like and crying to him. yeah like hugging and shit because i feel like they would not have been kind about that and chris is like no way we got dibs right got dibs on this corpse. and ace like we you got two him. choices yep you could leave and we're gonna take the body or you could stay we'll beat the shit out of you and, still and take we're gonna the take body. the body so and then Teddy's like, oh, yeah, we know about your fucking stolen car escapades. Right. He's like all talking like, shit over there. Why don't you go there. home and fuck your mother some more? Yes. Damn. Ace pulls out his switchblade on him. You're dead. Yep. And he's like, Chris tells him, he's like, you're going to have to kill taking me. Him. Yeah, you're not taking him. You're going to have to kill me. And Ace is like, I'm going to kill these kids. And so Ace comes at him with a knife to his neck. And then Gordy, ba Right? Like Ace literally bought a knife to a gunfight. He sure did. Gordy shoots that 45 in the air and Gordy aims it at Ace. Gordy peace. You're not taking him. Yep, nobody's, nobody's taking him. him. He's, he's like, like, come on, give me the gun. You're yeah, not going to like, what are you going to do? He's like, who are you going to shoot all of us? No, Ace. Just, just you. you. He's like, oh, fuck, maybe. <laughs> he tells him, like, don't you have some of your brother's good? You would have thought that kid's got a gun aimed at your face. That don't you, you have be the good sense? Some to, mess. You already took his hat. You fucking asshole. He should just shot him. Fuck it. Why not? Suck my fat one, you, you cheap, cheap dime, dime store hood. hood. And then after he says that later, and, and uh, Chris is like, what makes what? you think you got a fat one? Biggest one in four, four counties. counties. So, yes, Ace backs off mm-hmm. because yeah, Gordy is not backing down with his gun aimed right? at his face. And he's like, I'll get you. get you for this. Right? I'm not going to forget this shit. Maybe I mean, you will, and maybe you won't. Right? Like, I'm going to get you. Yeah. And, like, you would have thought that at some point, like, them kids aren't always going to have a gun. Ace would have killed these kids later. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Some Ace would have fully killed these, these kids. These kids did not live to adulthood. No, no. They if Ace them. lived to adulthood, these children did not yeah. live to adulthood. Not no. all four of them. Oh, no. Not, not Chris and Gordy. Oh, Vern definitely Vern and Teddy not he might have let, let alone because they took off running. He might have just maimed Chris because he was like his brother was in the gang. True. But he would have just going to make him Eyeball Gordy. Jr. And then, eyeball Jr. That's yeah. right. With the tss mm-hmm. and the eye. So they take off and... Gordy's like, I don't want to be a hero like this. They cover him with a blanket. mm -hmm, We're not taking him. We're going to make an anonymous phone call. So they make an anonymous call. They head home. Mm -hmm. They walk through the night, got back at 5 a.m. Mostly in silence. Gone for two days. Right? Labor Day is the next day. That Sunday or whatever before Labor Day is when they get back. Yeah, and they're just like, well, see you in school. See you in junior high. Vern heads home. He finds a penny. Teddy heads home. He's like, no hard feelings, Chris. Never. Never. So Gordy and Chris walk back together. Mm-hmm. They're like, they talk about how over the years they see less and yeah, less. Yeah, so the narrator voice comes back in. Teddy and Vern. And um, we heard Vern got married out of high school and had four kids and is a forklift, forklift operator. Forklift operator. And Teddy could not get into the army. Due to his vision and his ear. He was the only one that knew that that wasn't going to happen. He spent some time in jail and does odd jobs around town. Mm-hmm. And at least they got to live in this. Yes. It was in, in the, the story book, they, they both don't, die. They die as adults. Yeah. Well, um, I guess we all die as well, adults. Or, and I the mean, ones of us that don't. Right, right, right. But they die like younger 
than before that. the story's over. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Chris and Gordy stay together. Like Chris says, like he's never getting out of this town. But Chris did get out. Yep. He enrolled in the college courses with Gordy, mm-hmm. went to college, became a lawyer. Right. And he's like, give me some skin. Like, see ya. Not if I see you first. But last week, he went into a fast food restaurant, mm-hmm. and got stabbed, breaking up a knife fight. Right. Stabbed in the throat, died almost instantly. So he hadn't seen him in 10 years. Almost but over 10 him years. Forever. And uh, his kids come in. I'm like getting all. Yeah, been waiting for him to go swim in. He's been putting them off because he's writing. Like over an hour. And like I never did have friends. Like I did when I was 12. When I was 12. Jesus. Does Does anyone. anyone. And he shuts off the computer. He goes to rough house with his kid in the yard. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. <laughs> so, Stand By Me doomed us to, once again, want to have adventures. Yeah. Like, where were our adventures? And I had a massive crush on Will Wheaton, and I had a massive crush on, on River, River Phoenix. Phoenix. For sure, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I want to go on them some ventures. Yeah, not absolutely. Really. I mean, not anymore. I did when I was that age. Well, yeah, not now. We have one yearbook signing. In the form of an email. Ooh. If you want to email us, doomgenerationpodcast at gmail.com. There you go. This is from Leo Allen Jr. <gasps> Leo. O-M-G. There are certain movies that I literally hold my breath. Yeah, I spelled breath on purpose like that. <laughs> waiting and hoping that you ladies would do. This is absolutely one of them. He's talking about weird science. Oh. As a nerd who came of age in the 80s, I was a sophomore in high school when this dropped. There are certain quintessential Hughes films that define or doom us all. There's Weird Science, 16 Candles, Breakfast Club, Throw in Purple Rain and Revenge of the Nerds, and you have the deadly cocktail that helped breed the perfect doom generation. Love you, ladies, and all you do. Wish you nothing more than the best, because the best is all you deserve. Aw, Leo. Thank you. Um, So, yeah, we've got more good stuff coming at you next week. Um, we're starting, I think, our fall season a little early this year. So start looking. Or it's not really what fall, but we've got it's some. Really fall. We've got What's some things this? that don't seem oh, summery wait. necessarily That's coming true. up. We got a list. Mm-hmm. We got a different kind a of thing. A clip a, show coming up. For I don't know about you? clip show. That's going to well, give. Well, I mean, I don't the know. Idea. Not like I'm going to clip, clip show. It's, <laughs> not a, it. it's not a show, I guess. But it's like if we were a show and they did like a clip show, <laughs> it would kind of be like that. <laughs> It's a list. You'll f- you'll know what we're. I don't know. You'll figure there. it out. Cause um, you're coming, right? It'll be fun. So yeah. In the meantime, leave us voicemails seven zero two seven two zero doom emails doom generation podcast at gmail dot com. If you want to text that number seven zero two seven two zero yeah, you can, can text you it if you don't want to leave a voicemail. And until next week, we'll talk to you next time. Later, doomers. <laughs>